Welcome to our tutorial about the Table Layout Panel. In our previous tutorial, we looked at the Flow Layout Panel. The Flow Layout Panel has limitations about how you can position the controls inside the panel. You can only position the controls on the real estate of the Flow Layout Panel itself. Well, to get around this problem, you can incorporate the Table Layout Panel control. With the Table Layout Panel control, you use cells to precisely position the layout in columns and rows, and thus you circumvent some of the limitations of the Flow Layout Panel. In addition to adding columns and rows, we can remove the last column, last row, edit rows and columns. From this drop down menu, we can select rows or columns. I'll select rows, and we can specify the size type. The size can be absolute as measured in pixels, or it can be a percentage value or auto sized. For example, here that our second row is 50%, our first row will also be 50%. We can also insert rows or delete them from this window. Let's click OK. To add controls during design time, we can simply drag and position controls in the cell that we need. I'm not able to position two controls inside one cell, but I can get around this by using a second table layout panel inside the first one. Now I've got two table layout panels nested together. The tables are now nested, and I position my controls where I want inside the nested tables. Let's delete it. We can also manually position the rows and column dividers. One more thing here. We can set the column and row span properties. As you see here, now I can drag to increase, and I can drag it beside the first column. The column span property works the same way as in HTML. We're able to drag this button over two cells now. Same thing for the row span property. Let's also set the cell border style to see where the control was added. Let's double click and let's type some code. Dim txt1 as new text box. txt1 dot name equals my name txt1 dot text equals my text okay let's change the name of our table we're going to call it TLP1. Let's return to our code. TLP1 dot controls dot add txt1 close parenthesis and let's add a couple more text boxes copy right click and paste and paste it again here. We'll change this to txt2. And the references to one here, we will change to three.
OK, let's run our application to see how it works. As you see, we've got text boxes 1, 2, and 3. Let's close our application. If we want to add controls to any particular cell, we can specify it in the code right here. Let's use 1 here. Let's run our code again and see what happens. As you see, the first text box was added to the first column, second row. We start counting columns and rows from zero because they're zero based. Let's add a couple more controls. Right click. We'll copy and paste this. Let's make this text box four. And in this last block of code, we'll make it text box five. Now we've got more text boxes than cells, so let's see what happens when we run our application. As you see, the table layout panel added one more row, but not a column. Let's close. And let's see where this property is located. It's called Grow Style. We've got three options for Grow Style properties, Fixed Size, Add Rows, and Add Columns. If we keep adding controls, we're going to need to incorporate auto scroll. Let's set the auto scroll property to true. Now, how can we arrange the grow style dynamically? I'm going to add one more button. Double click. TLP1. Dot grow style space. Equals sign space. Once again, IntelliSense offers us some choices. You can simply mouse over each of the options to learn more about them. I'm going to select Add Columns. Let's also change the cell border style dynamically. TLP.CellBorderStyle equals. Now here IntelliSense gives us seven choices. I'm going to select Outside Double and run our program. We add the controls. When I hit the second button, the controls are rearranged and the border style changes. This concludes our tutorial about the table layout panel.